right, so this is my 40 breeder. That's Bob. And there's Carol, my albino curbensis. And they've eaten the last several of their spawns. So if you remember, it's been about a month or so ago. I'll put the date up. I rescued their spawn. I siphoned it out and put them in a fry tray. So here's the fry tray. Got it from Lowell's Fish Lab. And uh, they're in here. And there's also some plants in here. There's a bit of sawasatang. There's a little bit of hornwort. Uh, I put a couple ram's horn snails in here, small ones. Uh, kind of help clean, keep it cleaner. And they work, but they've also made more. So now what I think I'm going to do, because they're, they're starting to get pretty good size. Let me pull the air out. And you can see them scatter there. Because they're a bunch of little cowards. They're there. There's some that's going to be really hard to focus. We'll deal with that in a minute. There we go. And there should also be some albino cori fry in here. I rescued that uh, java fern leaf right there that you see, that, that white or dark green leaf uh, from my kitchen tank. They had spawned on it. They spawned on the glass. I missed those, but I saw some on the leaf. And this goes back to first part of September. And I captured that leaf and stuck it in the fry tray. Uh, the albino crebensis were still quite small. So I wasn't too concerned about them eating the eggs or the hatching fry. And within about three days, maybe four, uh, the cori eggs hatched off. Well, at least they were all gone. So I'm assuming there's some in here. So now what I'm gonna do is move them out of here. I've got a little five gallon tank with a sponge filter in it. I'm gonna show you that. All right, so here's that little five. I've got something else going on in here. A little duckweed experiment. I've got one piece of duckweed floating in here. We're going to see how long it takes to fill this little five gallon tank. It's just over one square feet of uh, surface area. So we'll see how long one piece of duckweed takes to completely inundate the surface of this little tank. But in the meantime, I've got a couple little pieces of Sawasa tang in here. And I am going to capture out those little fry. I think what I might do is just pour them in, uh, water and all. And they will grow up in here and eventually uh, that albino quarries will go back into the tank that they were spawned in. So in the meantime, uh, the fry tray is living on top of my juvenile betta and juvenile uh, bronze quarries. They're down there somewhere, but you see all the bettas. They grew up together. The, the, these bettas and the bronze quarries, they hatched uh, within a day or two of each other. Uh, got a previous video of the betta spawning and uh, these are those fry so they're coming up on a year both both these betta and the bronze quarries down around the bottom wherever they are will be a year next month I think about the 16th something like that so anyway let's move the let's move the uh, uh, I got a brain fart let's uh, move the little fry into that five gallon tank so I'm going to pull out the plants first and uh, kind of limit the amount of snails that go in here. I'm sure there will be some little ram's horns attached and uh, also I found a bladder snail in there too. So, But I'm not going to pour them in from above. I'm gonna set the set the uh, fry tray into the water and just slowly pour it out, or, or just kind of submerge the one end of the fry tray. So that way, uh, it's gonna be a lot of muck that goes with it. These are cool little fry trays if you're not familiar with them. They've got a little sponge filter on the end here. Uh, at this end, water water. Uh, is four step through air and it bubbles out here and you can adjust the flow and then it flows through the tray and goes out the little sponge filter that keeps everybody inside. Let me see if I can pick this up one handed. We've got a fragile cargo here. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so if I can get this in, I'm pouring it off, if I can get this in the water there we go, now we can get them out. There we go. 
and here they come. I'd like to do a count, but that's just not going to be practical right now. Now let me check the tray, make sure no fry got stuck behind. I see lots of little red ram's horns, little bits of sawasa tang. There's a big ram's horn. I don't see any fry flopping around, which is a good thing. That's it. There we are. So let's see. It's pretty easy to see some of the crevences. Now the first spawn of my crevences, about half of them came out albino. The other half came out looking like the species and you really spot the species looking ones. They've already got the little bars going on. And, oh, there's one Cory right there. So one hatched. You can see his little, his little barbels, his little whiskers. The little Corys are just so cute. And there might be another, but I'm happy with it happy with one that's for sure I didn't I wasn't certain if I'd get any out of that last spawn but grateful for what I got there and maybe there's another one I just haven't spotted them yet but these are all schooling pretty quick so I guess these are all the crevences but anyway there you go that's kind of an update on uh, the crevences fry that were rescued from their parents uh, they survived also a little albino quarry that rescued from its parents because they they munch down on those eggs so there we go so yeah i look at him and breaching just like a quarry all right so anyway as always thanks for looking